Yeah, church is always a funny conversation to have because mm. it's like you want to obviously be respectful, but then at the same time you want to express your opinion and stuff. Yeah. And it's like I'm not that shy away from it because like you can talk about it in any capacity, but at the same time you just don't want to offend people because like. People like to be offended. And when offended. you're in a space like this, mm. especially media and entertainment, I feel like the responsibility is very high. I found that out the, the hard way. Mm. Um, making mistakes and saying, Elaborate. saying what, certain things. What kind of mistakes? Um, I've started. Uh, oh, wait, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't no, want no, to No, I'm just wondering. I've started. Oh, yeah, like the cameras are rolling, okay. to be fair. Um, out here with my white wine. Like, I remember when I made um, some comments about the whole Maya Jama situation. And was this recently or was it? This was about a year the ago. The colorism stuff in it. Yeah. And I thought I was making a comment that was personal experience and personal opinion. Mm. And people really did, did not take did not take oh, it seriously. Well. Yeah, I must have said something like, I wasn't that offended because I'm not I'm not the darkest black woman out there. And then people were like, Why would you try and omit yourself from it? Da, 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 da. There's always those conversations and, about like, no, but colorism and I, I I understood where people were coming from. It took yeah. me it took me a while to kind of accept, okay, man, what you said was wrong. Mm. And um something I'm learning this journey as well is that there's truth and then there's the way you bring out truth. Mm-hmm. Um you have to be so careful with your words. And it's one of those ones where like it annoys me, but then at the same time, I see why people do it. Like, when people get to a certain level of notoriety, yeah. people go and dig into, like, their old tweets oh, or yeah. dig into certain oh. things that they tweeted. You need, you need to do good, a, a, listen, a clean out. Listen. Before you blow. I have cleansed and sanctified my Twitter account because yeah. some of the things that I used to tweet... I hmm. think we, we all, you know, had a lot of growing to do. Mm. It's just that some of us were thrown into limelight, or should I say internet lights because mm. you know we're not celebrities we're celebrities as, as, I, as i would describe yeah so like i want to touch on that because obviously <laughs> you have what's trending and yeah. like you talk about that a lot i still don't what is the celebrity a celebrity is a youtube celeb or an, okay. inf- or an influential like you know how we have like influencers now is this a coin that you've turned by the way yeah I, wow I, I, English. I, I, need, I need to a coin that you've turned a term wow. that you've coined is that it's what the wine already <laughs> continue <laughs> It's a phrase I made up because, um, mm. you know, I feel like we are very invested in influencers' lives mm. these days. It's not the same like it used to be. Like, we're very, like, they're mini celebs, but yeah, they're 100%. celebs. So I said, okay, YouTube, celebs, you're leb, you're leb no, celebs. That's quite smart. It's quite smart. Yeah. And even with, like, influencers, for example, when I was talking to Tiana, like, I don't know why sometimes influencers get a lot of hate. And right. it's like, it's not annoying, but it's just like, it comes from a place of jealousy. Well, I feel like it comes from a place oh, of definitely. jealousy. I feel like a lot of people are... Um, they they feel like I feel like a lot of people would 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 love to have the fame a lot mm. of influencers have, um, but then there's also this resentment mm. that you have what I would love but I can't get because I don't have what you have. Mm. So they know you have talent. They know you have something that people pander to. They know you have a voice. They know you have a message, but they don't have that. But mm. they would love what you have. They would love the perks, but they try to dismiss. Oh, 100%. The work that it takes to get those perks. That's 100%. And it's, it's like that with not just in, even influencers and YouTubers, but like when you look at sports people, you look at, I don't know, singers, not even just in the creative world, like any profession. Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of the time, especially in this new generation, yeah. not I'm bashing social media, but like people only ever show the good bits. And it's like, if you're always going on your Twitter feed or you're going on your Instagram feed and you only see the highlights of someone's life, yeah. they're never going to show you the moments where oh, things course. aren't really yeah. going well and yeah. things aren't really... And like bringing it to you as well, finally, because yeah. obviously, you know, we were speaking just before we started recording that like you've been doing YouTube properly full time for like the last year and a bit. Yeah. But obviously, you've been doing it for like five or six years yeah. before that. Yeah, as a hobby. Like, mm. we started, it started off very like silly, I would say. Mm. I, I've been trying to find my first video, but I can't find do it. Do you know what? I was trying, I was, that's one thing that I wanted to do before I knew you were going to come here. But yeah. if you go on my YouTube channel, before you kind of, for um, new visitors on my channel, mm. I have like a trailer. Okay. And that trailer basically shows like our journey. So I don't know mm. where I found those videos, but I found them. I okay. put them all together to show like our first video we, we shot on a web on a webcam. Mm. It was like, you know, like the Sepia filter. It looked Them like old that. ones. <laughs> it looked like that. The quality was terrible. Um, started off as a bit of a joke. We were just bored, mm. and we're like, okay, let's let's do a conversation. Um, is it is it hypocritical for you to go to church 
on Sunday on Sunday morning after going to the club oh. on Saturday night. And you know that back then it was all about the shubs. Mm, throwback. A yeah. lot of young people watching this won't even know what a shubs is. And right? we used to go to the shubs. Like, what are they call these days? <laughs> Just rave, rave, motive. party, motive. motive. That's yeah. what it is now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we used to go to the shubs and they were fun. But I, I was also a Christian, so I was like, okay, is it wrong for me to do this? So mm. I brought it to, to, um, to YouTube and you'll find that a lot of my conversations are my experiences mm. or things that I've learnt. Mm. So I will never go out there and try and preach on something that I don't really know or I haven't experienced. Mm. Um, and it just started off like people loved it. It was it was funny and we just started off like that. What was the question again? To be fair, I was just asking <laughs> how you started YouTube. Oh yeah, that's how yeah. I started. And then that hobby stage and then when I went to uni Myself and Twiggy, because it was a Twiggy and Chunky show before, before. Mm. myself and Twiggy um, kind of split off. She didn't go to my uni, so I carried on the show, but then people were kind of like, okay, Mo, like, you're always saying Twiggy is not around. Why don't you just call it the Mo Chunk show? Mm. And at that time, um, my name, I'd graduated from Chunky to Mo Chunks. Yeah, so I want to <laughs> touch on that as well. So, yeah. like, where does the, chunk, the Chunks, chunks come and from. the Chunky part so of... My, my friend and I, um, Twiggy, her name is Anili. Yeah. Um, and we were very like obsessed with our bodies. Mm. And um, one day when we when we said we want to see the, the videos, we're like, okay, but we need a name, we need a cool name. Mm. And then we kind of just looked at each other and I was like, okay, you're slim and big. I was a lot bigger back then. Mm. And she, we're like, okay, twig, chunk. Twig, gay, chunk, gay. The A-A-Y mm. actually stands for Attitude, Ambition and Youthful Essence. Oh, so wait, there was actual... <laughs> It was an actual acronym. Yeah, 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 so yeah. So attitude, ambition, and youthful essence. Wow. So when people would spell it with one A, we'd be like, nope. You gotta add the extra Y because yeah. you know it, it means but, something. Yeah, but then when I went to uni, I, I don't know where the chunks came from. Mm. People just shortened it and they started calling me chunks. People started calling me Mo Chunks. And I was like, okay, the Mo Chunk show. Mm. So that's how the Mo Chunk show started. Sick. And then I realized that, you know what, I actually have a lot of ideas, mm. like a lot of ideas. I, I have ideas for different talk shows that I eventually don't even want to feature on. Mm. So can I make this? How do I? Then I started researching. Then I found channels like All Deaf Digital and Madame Noir. They're more American based, mm. and they have like different like talk shows. And it's like an, it's like a, a network rather than a show. Mm. So I was like, okay, why don't I make it my chunks TV? Okay, what did you study at uni actually? Uh, medical physiology. So nothing completely nothing related to what you to do, do right now with media. So what was why did you choose that to begin with? Um, so I wanted to study medicine. Okay, cool. I'd been groomed and read and prepared to go to uni to study medicine mm. from a young age. You know, if you want to study medicine, you need to, you best believe that your stats need to be great. <laughs> so from a young age, I've been preparing for the moment that I'd be accepted into medical school. And um, I experienced a rejection. Okay. Um, so when that happened, um, it made no sense because my grades were on point, mm. my references were great, everything was fantastic. Um, and um, I cried real tears because I felt like I disappointed my family. But then I was like, you know what? Um, I want to go traveling, I mm. want to discover who I am. Can I, I touch on that really quickly before you continue? So you said, this is a conversation I really wanted to have with you as well, because like, obviously you being Nigerian, Yoruba, I'm Nigerian and Yoruba, there's certain things in our community, oh, yeah. um, especially as first generations living in this country. Yeah. Why did you feel that you didn't disappoint yourself, but you disappointed your family? I always find that an interesting thing that people say. Because it's that family pride mm. and this thing about you want your parents to eat the fruit of their labor. Mm. So you kind of feel like you owe it to them to to live out the vision that they have for you. Mm. So it's not necessarily about you. As a Nigerian child, you don't necessarily have a mind of your own. Mm. Um, and You're even, gonna trigger a lot of Nigerian yeah, parents even, watching even, this even my Even my, my mom, when she was you know growing up, mm. she wanted to be a lawyer. Her dad said no. That Seriously? She, yeah, that no man will marry a woman like her. Yeah, because Damn. it's too much. So you can imagine her now having a child like me that's very ambitious. Mm. And although it was a bit of a fight initially, now my mom is just like, go. Mm. Like many decisions I've made in the last six months, the typical Nigerian parent would not allow you to, mm. to go and explore your dream your dreams in the way that I am do today. They, do they, they understand what it is that you do? Um, I would say they would never fully understand the scope of the vision that God has given me because mm. I'm the vision bearer. Um, but I think they... To, to a degree, they, mm. they get that, okay, Mo does YouTube, she speaks at events, um, 
on certain topics and she has a media business as well mm-hmm. um and i think with the more fruit they saw the more understanding it's and always th- one of those ones yeah, yeah and i think it's not necessarily the money but even me just attending events and speaking and they see a clip it's like okay now I get it, but they will, no one can understand your vision in seed form because mm. the seed is placed in you. Yeah, so you need to work. I'm not saying try and prove yourself to people. But until they physically see it, Sometimes, they won't yeah. quite understand. It, it only makes sense issue. in spiritual sense to you because mm. you're the one having that experience of the seed being planted. Mm. Um, but when it, starts, when it starts to germinate, when you start to see fruit, then they, because they are the outside bearers of that vision. Mm. Yeah, that was deep. Like, I was in a moment and I was thinking, like, <laughs> she's preaching, she's preaching. Which is a good thing as well, because, like, even when I was speaking to Tiana, I was speaking to Nissi, like, a lot of the time you speak about faith and religion. And, like, when we started the conversation, you were talking about, um, I can't remember what it was you specifically said about that Maya situation, but it was yeah. something related to faith. Um, yeah. Is there a reason why you feel that, you know, on your platform, that, that is something that you just want to openly express yourself about? Um, I definitely believe that everything that I do is for the glory of God. Mm. Initially, I thought I just enjoyed media. It was just a passion of mine. And um, I I found myself Mm. uh, making blunders like that and saying the wrong things and appearing on certain platforms. Um, For example, I appeared on the ZZ Mill show. And- Did you? Yeah, I appeared on the ZZ Mill show and I got in trouble again because I again, this is what I mean about truth and how you actually bring it it Mm. out. So I spoke about, on her show, Rape Within the Black Community. Mm. And I had experienced molestation as a child. Oh, seriously? Yeah, as well as many people um, around me. It's, it's a very common thing that a mm. lot of young... It's a sensitive topic yeah, to talk about topic. on that. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I... Um, the way we call it in Yoruba is Agwe Kale Oro. Mm. The way I dropped it was offensive. Okay. So the message was missed. Um, so I really had to go back Blunder 1 um, on my platform, Blunder 2 on my platform, Blunder 3 on somebody else's platform, which I had no control over. Mm. And I end up on the Shade Borough. Do you know what? Yeah, I don't even care that I'm going to say this. This <laughs> might be a blunder for me. I really dislike that platform. Really? I, re- I just feel like they spew so much hate and so much, like, like vile. I don't know, man. It really just like the Shade Room. So UK version of the Shade Card Room. Card full. Oh. Damn. So yeah, I forgot where we were in the conversation, but it's all right. I think we were talking about the shade borough and shade how borough. Yeah, so I you got into a bit of kerfuffle. Yeah, I ended up on the shade borough. I ended up on Nigerian Instagram. You know, there's Nigerian Twitter. I didn't know there was. You Niger- see Nigerian I didn't know Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know there was Nigerian Damn, Instagram. Man. Oh my! They have no mercy. And you know how they feel about topics surrounding rape. Mm. So I was getting abuse. Like, so wait, could you kind of like delve into like? I know obviously it's, it's a while ago and it's yeah. quite a sensitive topic, but. Talk to me about some of the things that you said and like the response that yeah. you got as a result of that. So again, just to emphasize what I was saying about um, you can have your truth mm. and then there's the way you say things. Mm. So, um, you know, I still stand by the fact that there is an issue of molestation within our community. Mm. And not just our community, but I'm speaking from the experience of a black woman. Mm. Um, And I I recognized from what people would DM me and just conversations I would have with my friends that this is is an issue. Mm. Um, So that was what I was trying to call out. But then the way I said it, I ended up, um, I ended up chastising black men. Mm. Um, And I I believe I spoke from a a place of pain. At the time I didn't realize it was a place of pain. Um, I wish I didn't say it the way I said it, mm. um, but then it, I, I'm glad it happened because it made me reflect about how I say things. Mm. So that was what stripped me back, um, going back to what you were asking me about faith. Mm. So that's when I went back to God and said, okay, this media thing that you've called me into, I'm doing it, but I'm not sure I'm doing it the way you want me to do mm. it. And maybe that's why I'm getting in trouble. Maybe that's why I'm saying the wrong things. I really, I sat down and I, why do I keep saying the wrong things? Mm. Because I have this passion for topics such as self-love, mm. beauty, and and rape, and I, like I have this passion, this passion to have uncomfortable discussions mm. to make the world a better place. You know, media is so influential, so powerful. It's so powerful, mm. and that's why propaganda worked in 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 wartime because it's it's images, it's it's visuals, it's mm. things that grab people's attention. So God, you've placed this passion in me, but I keep saying the wrong things. Mm. Um, so um, I really had to ask God, okay, 
what is the purpose of this? Because there's passion and then there's purpose. So I asked God, um, what's my why? Mm. And that was my turning point. Mm. I took a step back from everything. I took a production break and I said, right, God, it's me and you. Yeah. I really want to figure out why did you place me on this earth? Because a lot of the time we confuse our purpose with our passions. Mm. We say, okay, I, I thought my purpose was media. Um, and I went to this event and um, I got this book. It was it's Purpose by Jessica Hugh. And she started breaking down this concept of the why. Mm. Um, and the why is so powerful because your why is your why regardless of your title or your function. Mm. So your why is your why when you're a mother. Your why is your why when you're a sister. Your why is your why when you're in the workplace. Your why was, my why was my why when I was working as a healthcare assistant. Mm. My why became my why even when I jumped into the media space. Uh, and this why for me was I am very purposeful in teaching. Mm. So whatever knowledge I figure out, I want to pass it on. Okay. And that was what was coming through. That was the passionate discussions about colorism. That was mm. the passionate... Did you feel that shift as soon as you had that conversation with God and you kind of went back I into knew yourself? Once yeah. why, I said, okay, right. Now your why is what is meant to determine how you pursue your passion. Mm. So then I realized, okay, right, I've been called into the media space and I have this... Um, this show called What's Trending mm. and it's so popular. It reminds me of like um, Wendy Williams in a sly way because yeah. like not comparing you to Wendy Williams because yeah. she's a whole different type yeah. of person yeah. but in terms of like how she discusses the yeah. topics and how exactly. she goes into it yeah. and when I was watching it I was like this is very like reminiscent of that yeah. kind of TV show was that kind of yeah. like the aim that you were having to go so for? So initially those were my inspirations yeah. Wendy Williams, Lovely T, um and I thought I had to do what they did. I mm. thought I had to throw shade. I thought I had to make funny, you know, slight comments and da 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 da. But I was like, this isn't glorifying God. Mm. Um, so when I realized that my why was to teach, mm. I realized that in every trending topic I discuss, I need to make sure there's a learning point. Although it's entertaining, I need to make sure that people are taking away something from this. Mm. And I see the fruit of it now when I go to events and people tell me, oh, Mo, like your, your shows are so entertaining, but I always learn something. I'm like, right. That's that's when you know we've it. We've got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't just about shade. Yeah. And we're very particular as well about what topics we speak on. When it comes to things like chit chat, of course, it's very easy to bring in God. Mm. When you're talking about something in the entertainment industry, it's very easy to go left. Go away. left the field in it. Yeah. And like even touching on that, like I wasn't even going to talk about colorism, but it just seems to always be like a constant topic because I remember mm. um, it was just this week actually. It was the whole Reese Parkinson. Your one day Ooh, thing. Okay. She, I don't know if you saw that. Oh yeah, she was. So she was talking show, about yeah. like um, she went to Love Island, and like she just knew that Sharif, the black man, wasn't Wouldn't. gonna pick her. Yeah. And it's like this constant reoccurring conversation. And I just want to know, like as a black woman, what is your stance on that whole thing, and where do you kind of? I think first of all, um, in your one day's defense. I'll tell you one day, by the way. <laughs> In Yovane's defense, I understand where she's coming from. Mm. I grew up white. Yeah. So I grew up in a white area. Okay. Um, I grew up in a town in West Sussex. I won't say the actual place. Cause when you say grow up white, yeah, because this is this is interesting because I had this for a very long time as well. So like, I feel like I'm well spoken. Yeah. I speak with, articulate myself. You yeah, know, intonation I'm not everything. your typical black yeah. man, whatever yeah. that may be. Yeah. So for a very long time, people used to say, "Oh, alright, you're you sound like a white man," but yeah. then it used to conflict me because I was like so wait you're attaching being well spoken, well spoken being to articulate being, to yeah, being white yeah. it's almost like a form of self hate yeah. so like you saying that like I almost resonate with yeah. that on a level yeah like yeah. okay I started off my journey in Nigeria and then I moved to the UK when I was 10 mm. literally a day after my 10th birthday and we moved to a little town in West Sussex mm. so the um, the part of so pre-10 is like your childhood right yeah so my adolescence yeah was um you know in a pretty white area mm. so coming coming to coming of coming into womanhood um, puberty, mm. yeah. So um, those are the years that almost shape you as a person you. because it's like all those experiences yeah. will live with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. And people don't actually realize just how how important and crucial that phase of your life is because yeah. it can determine what you do, where you go, your who you marry, you what career us. you do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you one day um, as growing up in Ireland, mm. and I know there's a black population over there. Um, but when you are fed certain standards of beauty, mm. and in my areas, well, there were some black guys, but the standard of beauty was not us. Mm. So therefore, they didn't find us attractive. 
and I never felt like I was attractive. Mm. It didn't take away or add to my attractiveness, but what I was being fed about who I was. It's like media conditioning and how exactly. you view yourself. Yeah. So I understand completely why you one day would say that yeah. because she might have grown up in an area where, yes, there are black men, um, but that love for us isn't Always what is shown. Yeah. Everybody here? God for how so this is a regular recurrence annoyingly but it's what happens and i like the <laughs> fact that things keep cutting out yeah. because um something i'm going to touch on with you a little bit later because obviously you know you produce yeah. you present you content create and um before we get into that conversation yeah we're talking about your one day and colorism yeah. and the conversation around colorism yeah so um yeah just continue with what you were saying before um so, so i i i empathize mm. with her it's very easy for people who have grown up in areas like London mm. that is very diverse and full of black people. Mm. Um, some that will like white girls, some that will like Asian girls, some mm. that will like black girls. It's very easy for you to say that, no, that's not my experience. Black men love black women. Mm. When you haven't grown up in an area where that love hasn't quite translated down to you. Mm. So I empathize with you one day. Colorism is definitely still a prevalent issue in our society. Um, I think um, the love of black women is increasing, but as we were saying off camera, it's kind of like a trend these mm. days um, to kind of love on um, black women, dark skinned women especially. Mm. Um, the, the pictures you see online usually like them in hyper sexualized yeah, and chocolate all not, over not them. Throwing Meg the Stallion that, under the bus, but that kind of thing, you know what I mean? You know yeah. that emoji, um, the chocolate emoji. I know exactly what you mean, yeah. yeah. Why um, did like, I'm not gonna throw men under the bus here, but why did like that's one thing that irritates me as well, because like why do people equate black women or black people with chocolate? Like that's not a compliment. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. You chocolate. The darker the berry. And I'm just like, what juice. does that even mean? Interesting. And I even feel that way with obviously like black men don't get it as much as black women, but like something that not bugged me, but something that I just observed recently is obviously Ovi's gone into Love Island and like Ovi's Ovi is a good looking, tall, six foot something Ooh. black man. Yeah. But a part of me feels like, hmm, there is an undertone of fetishization. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah, you like Ovi, but you like the fact that he's dark, he's tall, yeah. he's six foot, he yeah. plays basketball. From who, though? Just women. And yeah. I'm not going to say any type of women in terms okay. of race. I just feel like a lot of women have fetishized Ovi. And I've seen it with black men a lot who, are, mm. who have a, a level of status. So Anthony Joshua is another person. But Anthony Joshua is Anthony Joshua when you have okay. that physique. Obviously would you, you say feti was, how do you say the word fetishization? Would, you, would you say that is um, more to do with when you sexualize someone? Do you think I don't know if Ovi's being sexualized? I feel like he's been sexualized. Do you reckon? Yeah, Elaborate. I feel like he's been sexualized. Um, so funny you mentioned Anthony Joshua. When yeah. I think of him, like I, I think sex. Yeah. Yeah. Abs, biceps. Yeah. Sweat. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know what we what we, what we consider handsome, mm. tall, dark. You know, broad shoulders. You know, very like. It's kind of like the way women think. I guess mm. it's the way men sexualize women as well. You're kind of thinking. It's like two coins are the same. You know, if I had her, you know, I would do some things. Yeah. To, and you know, <laughs> you know. So it's kind of like that with Ovi and. Yeah. But I feel like when you fetishize someone, it's more to do with. Um, so you're of a different race. Mm. You don't necessarily like their blackness, mm. but you like the kink that comes. That comes with them. That yeah. comes I know with exactly it. What you know, to say. it's yeah, kind yeah. of like I can have a foot fetish. Mm. It's not that foot, um, feet, foot. It's not like feet <laughs> are sexual. Yeah. But there's a kink. Like there's something that excites me. Yeah. About but like you, you can have you, yeah. people that have babies with black people that don't like black people. Mm. But there's a kink about sleeping with black men and women um that they yeah i know get, exactly what you're trying to yeah, say because so, like, it's always like sometimes when a race debate happens or somebody who happens to be white and be with a white i mean a black person they'll be like i can't be racist i've got mixed race children but i don't think people understand like the intricacies and just how deep rooted racism yeah. can be and how yeah. passive it can be it's as bigger well. than i accept your color it's mm. you know it's how we're accepted in the workplace. It's how we're perceived when we walk down the street. It's, it's so many different layers. Unconscious it's, bias as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. It's been happening in football a lot recently as well. And it's like, it's frustrating me because it's like, the people who don't experience it are the ones telling us how we should react to it. 
and it's like if me as a black man hmm. i'm telling you this is my experience yeah this is what i've had to face like for example going into the shop the usual one if i'm wearing a tracksuit being followed by the security guard it's like if i experience that on a day-to-day -day basis and i'm speaking out about it and i'm opening up for you to now say oh you're pulling the race card oh you've got a chip yeah. on your shoulder it creates a lot of resentment and it then it furthers that divide the race card yeah man yeah. i'm trying to think like how can we change that conversation because like especially in this country for example mm. just with the way the media is going and the way things are reported yeah i feel like it's going to get worse and then you know we throw in brexit and we throw in nationalism yeah. and all this other yeah. stuff yeah. how do you reckon like especially for the next generation to come we can i know that's a heavy question to yeah, ask yeah it is but um how do you reckon we can alter that conversation in terms of about racism generation? or colorism yeah just both i guess or how people view different skin colors something i've i've been in conversation with um some ama amazing people recently mm. one of which is nigo true okay um he's a poet and he is somebody that doesn't really like conversation like he values conversations about problems but mm. he values even more conversations about solutions mm. um as as per where we can go um so i think maybe we need to reduce the complaining and think about okay how can we love ourselves because mm. it's in at the end of the day if a black man is like a black woman that there's something deeply rooted mm. not saying that you have to like every black woman that you see but if no like i don't go there so for you to openly say yeah like that then and even there must black be women issue, as well yeah. that have kind of grown up in like white areas you hear them saying things like wasn't that like um somebody on love island last year i can't remember her um, name samira samira saying yeah. that you know she goes for blonde you know um so if, if if you're saying things that you're, if you're saying things like that openly, that that means there's something in your heart because mm. you know out of the abundance of the heart the mouth the mouth speaks. Mm. Um, so it's what's inside here that comes out. So I guess we need to heal ourselves mm. before we think about healing, healing the next generation. People, yeah, fair enough.